The Nissan Heisman House is back. Rush over to NissanHeismanHouse.com to enter for a chance to win a new Nissan Titan. No purchase necessary. Ends December 8, 2017. Open to residents of the USDC 18 or older. Official rules at NissanUSA.com slash Heisman House sweepstakes. Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. Tell me some rich dope just bought a Leonardo da Vinci painting for $450 million. I'm Tony Kornheiser. I thought it would class up the commode. All right, that, that, that begs the question. What? In which house are we talking about? We're we talking about the master bath where you have like a ski slope in there, or we're we talking about some powder room? No, the, the powder room downstairs where I have all the ESPYs that I've stolen over the years. Oh, okay. I right, got you. Right on top of the toilet, right on top of the tank. I was, hoping that, that, I was hoping that boy's tree house, I'm hoping to plan for the house next door for the little house no i'm going to lend it to you for one of your gated community houses welcome to pti boys and girls in today's episode the nfl warns jerry jones aaron Rodgers takes snaps and tiger woods and please listen to this stop carefully it. don't go is here said to be crushing don't the do ball. it stop but it we begin today with three notable performances in a single basketball game last night joel Embiid had 46 points 15 rebounds seven assists and seven blocks as the 76ers beat the Lakers in L.A. Embiid's teammate, Ben Simmons, had 18 points, 10 assists, and 9 rebounds. And Lonzo Ball had just 2 points on 1-for-9 shooting, and he sat out the entire fourth quarter of a close game. Wilbon, which performance stuck out the most? Embiid, Tony. Embiid. I mean, come on. I mean, it, it looks like he can just do everything. You know, every, I don't know, few years, is it 8 to 10 years? sort of a, a new edition of a big man comes out. And so, you know, we went from the likes of Russell and Wilt to Kareem, and then we moved on to Bill Walton, and then guys like Chris Webber who stepped out further, and, and Ralph Sampson. And he, Embiid seems to do all that, and he plays so well off Simmons, Tony. You can't separate them. Simmons, it looks like a young, really young, Magic Johnson his rookie year and Kareem. Remember how Kareem, he got Kareem so enthused about playing yeah. again so deep into his Hall of well, Fame career? Well, because Magic was the greatest this, player of all time. Yeah, This looks like that, Tony. It does. Well, look, the short answer is Embiid because those are monster numbers and they may, may be historic numbers. I like Ben Simmons a lot. I think he's going to be a triple-double machine and without the theatricality, of, of Russell Westbrook. But I'm going to point something out about Lonzo Ball, and thank you for mentioning Magic. Because Magic picked him with the second overall pick in the draft and staked his reputation on the fact that he would lead them back to showtime, which is what Magic created, right? And the kid can't shoot yet at all. No. He's shooting 30%. Worse, he's a point guard in the league who does not get to the line, which means he's not getting deep enough to the basket That's true, to Tony. draw defenders and get the ball to somebody else. He's averaging one and a half Foul shots a game. But you know why Mike. that is? Because of the obsession with the three. Well, Magic wasn't obsessed with the three. Ben Simmons isn't obsessed with the three. They use their length and their size and their vision, their gift, to get to the basket, to create, for, uh, create a layup before you worry about the three. I agree with that, Tony. But he, look, he's Lonzo been solid sometimes in a lot looks, of ways. Mike, he sometimes looks like he's standing still he looks out lost there. Sometimes he's a rook, and so a rookie. So he, he, he's. I think he'll get better. But if this was his second year, you'd say, "Whoa, he's a bust." If yeah, it was the other guys year. had red shirt years, Lonzo Ball didn't. He's out there playing now, okay. and I'll applaud him for that. The Sixers still have a ways to go to catch the Boston Celtics, who go for their 14th consecutive win tonight in the Garden against the Warriors. Steve Kerr has already pronounced the Celtics the Eastern Conference team of the future even though the Seas have been beaten up on a bunch of homecoming teams mostly. The Warriors have won seven in a row themselves. So, Tone, would a Celtics win tonight over Golden State be actually meaningful? It's a great word, meaningful, and the answer is no. It would not be meaningful. What it would be is interesting. It'd be something to take and fold up and put in your pocket to take out at a later date. It'd be something that down the road might confirm something. Would it be meaningful? No, because nothing meaningful happens, you know, before February in the NBA. So, no, it would not be meaningful, right? You agree you know, with that? You know, Tony, I generally agree with that as a rule, but I'm going to disagree with you a little bit in this way. A team like the Celtics has to still, with all those young players, and you were the one that pointed out, if they're going to do something, they got 10 guys, 27 or younger. So with that in mind, they've got to create some situations, even if we don't think they're meaningful, where they think those games and results are meaningful. And I think you only create okay. those against a few teams in the league moving up 
okay? Oklahoma City, Houston, San Antonio, Cleveland, Golden State. Right. And you need to win some of those games so that when you get to February, you can go out and have meaningful wins. Without getting them now, I don't know if you can do it. The Warriors are the best team in the league. There's no question about this. Absolutely. They probably look at, at Boston with a certain amount of curiosity. How are they now? How are they going to be later? But if I coached Boston, you know what I would say to them tonight? I would say go out and enjoy yourselves because this is the best team in the league. Go out and have as much fun as you can and don't worry about the result of this game. Winning yeah. streets come and yeah. go. All right, we're going to use this to have fun and learn something. Watch the way they play because they play it, Mike, they play it better see, than anybody. Tony, but, Tony, all that argues that there's meaning to it. Because you've got well, this team on the other side that you're trying to measure yourself the against. Result, so start no, doing it. The result is not meaningful. Okay, but wait. What you learn is now meaningful. Now I think we agree. Yeah. The result is not necessarily no. as meaningful as all that goes yes. on in those yeah. minutes. Should tonight. be fun for them. Should yeah. be fun. The Associated Press has obtained a letter sent by the NFL to Jerry Jones' attorney accusing the Cowboys owner of, quote, conduct detrimental to the league's best interest, unquote. This is the latest shot at Jones who has threatened to sue the league and individual owners on the compensation committee in an attempt to block a contract extension for Roger Goodell. Will Bond, do you see this as a serious step by the NFL? Uh, Semi-serious, Tony. I mean, I read the story in the New York Daily News, which wants to make the case that, you know, this is the first step toward removing Jerry Jones. And then even in the same story, the Daily News says, well, that's unlikely to happen. Really? You think so? And then there's a talk about a, a fine, and maybe that's as, as, as high as you would go. Tony, this is chin music. This is Roger Clemens throwing right under the chin of a hitter that he's annoyed with. And the other owners, and perhaps the league, are now annoyed with Jerry Jones. It's chin music. Might they actually plunk him? Maybe, but let's see what the warning does. I'm going to take the narrow question, is it a serious step? And I'm going to say yes, it is. Because when you invoke the phrase, conduct detrimental to the best interests of the league, you are walking down a path that ends in heartache. This is exactly how baseball got rid of Marge Schott. This is exactly how the NBA got rid of Donald Sterling. But we Jones isn't equal to those guys. He's a much different and much more important owner but let than me, those two Let nuts. me sketch this out for you for a second. Because you and I are old enough to remember when the Cowboys were the number one attraction before Jerry Jones. And they will be the number one attraction after he's gone. If an entrenched Roger Goodell is looking for vengeance, and if five or six members, fellow owners on the competition committee, are looking to slap him down, would they throw him out of the league? I doubt that very much. But would they try to make his life a living hell? How? I think they might. How? With fining, with draft picks, with censure mm. all the time. I think, I think this is more serious. He's been too good a partner, Tony. He, Tony. Look, I, I, look, Jerry has pushed the boundaries before yeah. with these same owners on the way into the league. But he's been there. He now is the establishment. He's not just some one-off rebel who's out there. Mike, he's Mike, never, ever underestimate what a small group of rich men That's might true. do. <laughs> never. I, I'll and I wish I were one of them. What, Jerry couldn't get his own group? You think he and Dan Snyder, you think Jerry is not plotting with his own group, Dan Snyder and others? I just, Mike, I think he's plotting, and I think, they're, I think they're 50 yards behind the other guys at the maybe, moment. Maybe so. Cheeseheads. Oh, they're freaking out because Aaron Rodgers, whose broken collarbone has sidelined him indefinitely, took some snaps, threw a towel, maybe threw a ball with some limited motion. A lot of folks presumed Rodgers would miss the rest of the season. Tony, would you risk a return by Rodgers this season, or would you insist that he be fully healed for next season? Aaron Rodgers is the most important player in the NFL. The most, the most important Golden player. Golden boy? You well, forget about that guy wearing number 12 up in New England? Because he can run it, just because there are more right. options available to him. All right. He wants to play, much like Brady is now, he wants to play until he's 40, and he has publicly said so. And I'm sure he doesn't want to be in a Tony Romo situation where you break the same bone every single year. But I will tell you this, if he is cleared to practice and then he is cleared to play, Mike, you know Aaron Rodgers, he's going to want to get in there. He will. Going to want to. This is very simple. This takes very little time to answer this to me. What Aaron, Aaron Rodgers says, that's what they should live with. This, don't, don't give me about consulting. Yes, you will meet with Aaron Rodgers and the doctors. And then Aaron Rodgers 
who has been in the league double-digit years now, yep. who has won a Super Bowl, who is a threat to lead his team to the Super Bowl every single year, you're going to do what the hell he says. And if he says, I'm fine, boys, let me at it, Aaron Rodgers has earned the right yeah. to get out there now. There's another part to this. As you look around the NFC, do you really think the Eagles are great? I don't. Do you really think Not the yet. Rams are great? Do you Not really yet. think the Saints are great? They're all better than the Packers right now, though, Tony. The Packers but, have some other issues. But when Aaron Rodgers comes back, he's got a chance to take that team this year yeah. to the Super Bowl. Yes. No, he does. So that's going to play into all of this. And, you know, that, of course who knows what's going to happen tomorrow, Mike. If he can play right now, if he can I think play he's going to want to play. He's going to play. I agree. I, this play. is not hard. And no, no, no Packer executive and no doctor should stand in the way of that if Aaron Rodgers says, I feel good, give me the ball. That's exactly what will happen. We move now to the most exciting story of the day. The oh. possible return oh. to glory of Here Tiger Woods. Go. Here you Ricky go. Fowler, who averages 299 yards off the tee, told Golf Magazine that Tiger is hitting drives, quote, way by, unquote, Fowler. Tiger himself went on the Gino Oriema podcast recently, and no, I didn't know he had one either, and said how surprised he was at how far he's hitting his irons. Quote, I'm back to hitting it my full numbers and not really trying to do that. I didn't realize how far I dropped off because of the pain in my back, unquote. Wilbon, aren't you beginning to believe that Tiger's comeback is for real? You are pathetic. Oh, really? I mean, you lap really? up every word every week. I do. Until Tiger does that. Yeah, well, that happens. And then you get, you know, you're, de you're depressed. Yeah. I want this. You know I want this. I tell you all the time. The three most important people in sports in my life, and the only three that sort of changed my life, Ali as a kid, adolescent, Michael Jordan, and Tiger Woods. That's my list. Nobody else on the list. So you know what I want. But you keep falling to... I do. The key words here are back and knees. Until Tiger gets out there and walks 18 many, many, many times and hits all these shots, and by the way, chips and putts, right. I, 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 I can't let myself go there like you do so easily. One word. What? I'm not going to quote the graduate. One word. What? Fantastic. Oh, okay, now I understand that the range is not the course. It isn't. I know. And I understand that, you if know, dig, playing you would a few be a holes... Six. Is and not be playing 18 holes. And I understand that repetitive motion on some irons is not like going out on a course where you only get one shot to hit that. I understand all of that. I'm giving you the caution. Okay? But this tournament, he's got this Hero World Challenge, the limited event thing where you get to play yes. four. Yes. That's in a couple of weeks. I know. So let me go back to my one word. 30th of November. Fantastic. <sighs> what if he's great? Not that he's going to win majors. What if he could actually get on the tour again? If he could just be Tiger Woods again, whatever that means. Be great. But, I, Tony, back and knees. Okay, those are your two words. Again, mine is fantastic. <laughs> okay. Let's take a All break. Right. Coming up, what can the Cowboys do to better protect Dak Prescott? And Big Ben hates Thursday Night Football like any sane human being. But what makes him so good at it? You're wearing a lot of purple. Is Northwestern part of that wardrobe you got on? Uh, yeah, I got a pen yeah. here somewhere. There it is. My got the pocket. Pardon the interruption is presented by Sky Vodka. Make every day. Please drink responsibly. Part of happy hour. Hey, girl, have you done something new with your scales? Using new moisturizer? Nice. It really brings out the hazel in your eyes. Oh, hold on. Are you using whitening strips, too? Your fangs look good, girl. Really good. A really charming snake charmer? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. Wait, what? Have you been doing Pilates, too? Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Welcome back to Pardon the Interruption, presented by Sky Vodka, part of Happy Hour. Many of you have come to rely on the PTI investigation team to tell you what's really happening in the NFL. Well, brace yourselves. We have learned that week 11 of the NFL season kicks off tonight which makes it a perfect time to welcome in ESPN NFL analyst and Hall of Fame quarterback Steve Young. I'm putting on the glasses to read this correctly. Tonight is the Titans at the Steelers. Roethlisberger wants to get rid of Thursday night games, which is insane because he's 5-0 and on Thursdays. Do you think there are keys to succeeding in the short turnaround the teams face from Sunday to Thursday? 
Ah, Tony, of course. It's called institutional academic rigor. Very few teams teach it. The Patriots are the kings. Usually on Thursday night, what they do, they come in Monday, the coaches say, look, what are we going to do? We don't have time. Okay, whatever the previous week's game plan, just re reconstitute it, you know, and out it comes. But the other teams that are really have the academic rigor who can tell the players, look, part of our institutional rigor is that you go home and study. We have three or four new concepts that we want you to have on practice on Tuesday. You have a day to get it done, come back it memorized, and then everybody knows that they're shamed if they don't because it's a part of the DNA of the, of the place. There's maybe two or three teams like that. That's how you respond on Thursday night. Otherwise, it's just a crapshoot. Everyone throws everything to the wall. Everyone, everyone's hurt anyway. The game plan's the same. And like, well, eh, let's see how it goes. <laughs> Tony, make sure you remember IAR, Institutional Academic Rigor. With a Steve Young Patton on that. So well, take by that, the Tony. way, everybody always Boom. says one of the great advantages of the New England Patriots is that they have more college graduates than anybody else. And, and, they said and that. That maybe that would said. dovetail to what, what Steve is saying. Speaking 100%. of the Patriots, Steve, Raiders, Patriots at Altitude in Mexico City this coming weekend. The Patriots are in Colorado Springs practicing and something near that. The Raiders just said, we'll stay in Oakland. We'll get there when we get there. Do you see an advantage at work here? No, nah, not really. I mean, when we play in Denver, and it's uh, Mexico City is even a little higher, so I mean, I get that. But, you know, it's what happens is the, when you warm up, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, my gosh, and you panic. You go in for, you know, go in for the uh, national, you know, before the national, you come back out, and you play, and you're like, oh, yeah, what happened to the altitude? It's like, I don't know what it is. It's warm up is where the fear is. The game, unless you're in, you know, hurry up offense or defense on a consistent basis, it really doesn't play a part. So I think the Oakland Raiders will be fine. The biggest problem with the Oakland Raiders is they got to play the Patriots. <laughs> yeah. No matter what altitude, I'm sure. Dak Prescott was a sitting duck last week with Tyron Smith out, and he could be out again versus the Eagles. So systematically, what, if anything, Steve, can you do to help your quarterback? Well, one thing is stay with your identity and run the football. I mean, I know Zeke's not back there, but run it. That's the best thing to do now because Dak has really set as a young quarterback to run the football and then play action. Once he loses that threat and you know, the team's like, well, they're not going to run it, and then Dak has to now throw their way through it, that's a change in identity that even Dak can't happen. If you're going to have problems at tackle, though, you can chip with the back. You can bring the tight end over and cover. You can, you know, I mean, in a lot of, a lot of ways you can run through the defensive end. The tight end can help you a ton. I mean, you can roll right. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can do. They didn't, the problem is they didn't do any of it. They got to do all of that. But number one, stay with your identity. I know Zeke's not back there, but run the football. It's the only chance. I will get you out of here on this, and it is about running the football to some degree. And it's about being a big-time quarterback. The Saints, who usually throw the ball, ran for nearly 300 yards. And Drew Brees, who's going to the Hall of Fame at some point, threw for only 184 yards. Do you think Drew Brees actually loves that as a quarterback? Or are you conditioned people like you and Drew Brees to say, you know what, I'm going to throw the ball, stop running? In my youth, I, did, I hated when they called a running play. I'm like, oh, no, dang, you know. <laughs> but he is Superman. He's like, Superman doesn't care. I'm already Superman. Like, yeah, go ahead, give me some help. Get some other superheroes in here and make it happen. This, he's been carrying the Saints for forever. I mean, he's put these guys on their back, uh, on his back for half a decade longer. And so all of a sudden, he's got some defense that's stiffened, help at corner. Now he's got a running game, almost 300 yards. He's like, he's got the S on his chest. Just relax and just take it to the Super Bowl, Drew. No problem. Thank you so much, as always, Steve. Thank you, Thank Steve. You. Appreciate it. All right, boys. Let's take one last break, but still to come, Hal Steinbrenner reveals something that tells you exactly how much he wanted Joe Girardi gone. And how much could Chris Paul's return change the 11 and 4 Rockets? You know, Steve is right about that. Drew Brees has been there for, I think, 12 seasons now. I think this I was going to say. Enjoying this podcast? Then you should check out all of ESPN Films' newly released 30 for 30 podcasts. From the producers of our award-winning documentary series, this is an amazing collection of sports stories you need to hear to believe. Speaking of amazing, Delta Airlines and the Fly Delta app make your travel experience amazingly easy with real-time bag tracking, e-boarding, and passport scanning during check-in. And don't forget to download 30 for 30 podcasts to fill your flight with stories that will keep you coming back for more. Pardon the interruption is presented by Sky Vodka. 
make every day. Please drink responsibly. Part of happy hour. Happy time, people. Happy 24th birthday, C.J. Beathard. When Beathard replaced Brian Hoyer some weeks back, it looked like he was just holding a place until Jimmy Garoppolo showed up. But Garoppolo has shown up, and Beathard, who got the 49ers' only win last Sunday, continues to start. Now it's possible the rookie out of Iowa may have won the job. So what are the 49ers doing with Garoppolo? Tony, this will shock you. You know, Garoppolo's a Chicago kid. Who do you think I'm rooting for in this saga? Garoppolo's my guess. Beathard. I'm rooting for Beathard. Happy anniversary, Max Scherzer. On this day last year, you won the National League Cy Young. Last night, we learned that Scherzer received 27 of 30 first place votes over Clayton Kershaw for his second Cy Young in a row, also becoming just the 10th pitcher to win it at least three times. The other nine pitchers on that list, Randy Johnson, Clemens, Maddox, Carlton, Kershaw, Pedro, Koufax, Seaver, and Palmer. So Max Scherzer is going to the Hall of Fame. That's automatic Hall of Fame. When I heard this, I thought somebody revived Kornheiser. Yeah. Happy trails to the sidelines for Chris Paul. The much sought after free agent has played in only one game so far for the Houston Rockets. Without Paul, the Rockets are 11 and four in first place in their division and trail only Golden State in that conference. So let's see if Chris Paul helps or hurts. Tony, it may take a few games. You know Chris Paul is going to help, and they're going to need him to deal with the likes of the Warriors and Thunder and teams out west. Got to pretty Gotta work this out with Harden. Got to oh, work sure. this out. They I know mean, that. I'm sure they know That's that. their big thing. No errors today, and so we go to the big finish. Let's do it. Baseball MVPs tonight. Who should win, Mike? Altuve over Judge and Goldschmidt, Tony, who got his team, the Arizona Diamondbacks, to the playoffs. Hal Steinbrenner says he would have let Joe Girardi go even if the Yankees had won the World Series. What an egomaniac. I'm, I'm very surprised by that. I mean, I guess the rift, and Brian Cashman has to be part of this, the rift must have been enormous over a couple of years. Apparently. To Sean Gibson of the Jaguars, says he thinks the Browns will probably go 0-16. Do you agree? I don't know, Tony. He's a former Brownie in the two-play this weekend. I hope the Browns win. Steph Curry's going to teach a basketball class online. You going to take that class? No. I, I can't even get on a computer. I, it's a great victory when I text and people say my letters are too large. I'm not going online for this. No. Last one, I didn't catch the Creighton Northwestern score last night. How did our Wildcats do? Oh, you didn't see a score? No. We won. Really? Yeah, we beat a team from Nebraska already this month in overtime. I guess you missed that. We're out of time. We'll try and do better the next time. And I'm Tony Kornheiser. You see, I'm wearing all this purple, don't you? I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, knuckleheads. You can get the PTI podcast on the app or Apple Podcast. Binghamton at George Mason tonight. Go Bearcats. And Got a congratulations, shout out to Greg McDermott. Craig. Good job by him. Stupid rubber duck. Oh, I bet this is Mariota's room. Whoa, I get that he went to Oregon, but a pond theme room seems a little weird. Uh, I was just looking for Mariota. Hey, what's going on out there? I told you we should have just gone to HeismanHouse.com, but no, we had to go to the house. We could have voted for this year's Heisman winner from the safety of our computers.